see we spent about an hour uh, in the garden today, this morning um, taking a look at uh, harvesting a number of things so uh, the majority of what you're going to see is focused in on tomatoes so we've got yet another bushel full of uh, tomatoes that will be uh, processing into sauce uh, etc and we have a half bucket full of uh, cherry tomatoes and we've got a number of cabbages so red cabbage or what we've always called red cabbage um, roya coal uh, in, in Dutch um, and a white cabbage uh, so there's one of those in there and uh, Patricia's already taken a few smaller um, green cabbages uh, back to the house and uh, I've gone through the green beans again there's a few purple ones on the bottom that we'll be using for seed but um, th this is the um, uh, third picking of beans and there's going to be a few more so we're going to leave the plants on for now uh, the purples could probably come off but uh, I'm tired and I'm heading back to uh, to the house uh, to work inside for a bit Yeah, so the rest of the garden is uh, coming into its own. So I'll just give you a little bit of tour as to what's happening here. Um, so here are the beans that you were seeing. The carrots are looking good. I'll uh, give you an indication of that by pulling up one or two. They come in bunches. Okay, the problem that we have with our carrots is that they're a good size but they're stunted in terms of their depth and that has to do with the depth of the soil that we've got. Uh, keep in mind that um, this soil has two layers for the last two seasons and as a consequence they're not deep enough for the carrots to actually get uh, quite long, extended, etc. But uh, they're looking good, uh, good shape, good color. Um, and they've got a good taste to them as well. The rest of well, the cucumbers are basically done. Uh, so the plants still remain, but you can see that they're looking very, very uh, decrepit, uh, old plants um, and haven't got much life left to them. Here you can see the uh, kale uh, looking very, very good. We need to start harvesting it soon. 
and there's where the cabbages were. At the end of that row, we have eggplants growing. And there's still a number of them. You can see them on that plant, but also on the uh, plants in the foreground. Green onions are still growing. That's the end of the carrot row that you're seeing there. And then the beans after that, and the tomatoes following that. Uh, good crop of uh, sunflowers. Not an awful lot that we can do with the sunflowers, uh, but they do provide uh, good shade, and uh, birds really, really like them. Moving to the other garden. Again, lots, I don't know if you saw the bird flying away. Lots of sunflowers there as well. Um, here are the remains of the zucchini. Um, there's one there. And I think there are a few more over here, but again, the zucchinis are coming to an end. The peppers are just coming into their own. So Trisha went through here yesterday. And here you can see there's two green peppers there. Oh, and there's another two. Don't see any more there. There's another green pepper. There are a few varieties here. Uh, there's a pepper that's got an end to it, um, a point on the end, and those will turn red. We've got a couple of examples of those in the house already. And then some more green peppers. Some more pointy ones that'll turn red. Some more pointy ones. And some more green peppers. So those are coming. And you can see that there are a number of squash. So you can see the green ones there. And there's some yellow squash in there. They've got plates underneath them to keep, the, uh, keep them out of the dirt. Keep them from starting to rot. I don't want to disturb the leaves too much, but there will be a number of squash in there as well. And then there's a pumpkin here. You can see. And then here's where we took the potatoes out. So there's nothing in, in the ground here at this point. Uh, more squash in uh, the middle row. And there you can see a squash. And there'll be more squash in here. There's a uh, volunteer tomato we did not plant. So there's an acorn squash. There's an acorn squash. There's an acorn squash. Number of pineapple squash, or sorry, um, uh, pumpkin squash. There there, here, oh, there's a number of them all the way around in this area. The rest of this outside row, we had uh, onions, so those onions have all been harvested, and then the front, or the top side, the front of this was all garlic, and they have been harvested as well. You'll be seeing those uh, showing up, hanging at some point in the relatively near future in the garage somewhere. And then I'll bring you over to where we're drying our onions. So this is our onion haul for this year. Red onions as well as the, uh, the green onions or the cooking onions. We've got a, a good supply, uh, much better than last year, but uh, we're really pleased with the size of many of them. So that's a good sized onion. Um, so Trisha will be, I think, uh, taking a lot of those and uh, doing some braiding so that we can hang them uh, in long rows uh, in the garden or in the garage. And here you can see a hibiscus plant. Um, so those hibiscus plants, we need to be careful that uh, we don't end up with frost in the near future because uh, they'll um, they need to actually be kept out of the frost 
because they are tropical plants and they don't do well if there is a uh, uh, a hint of really cold temperatures. In fact, uh, we need to take them inside by the time uh, nights are around four or five degrees because uh, they will not thrive at that point. Anyhow, that's an update for uh, what we've been doing in the garden and uh, I'll get this posted as soon as possible so that you can see what we've been up to. Um, take care and we'll talk to you soon.